Thank you for tuning into our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an Amazon FBA business for sale in the baby niche. Created in November 2014, this business makes $24,522 per month in net profit, and the listing number for the business is 45049. We do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the businesses they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Luke, thank you for coming on here today. How are you doing? Yeah, thanks. Great. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Very excited to discuss this business. As you were were telling me before we started the interview, it's a business that has really been growing and has a lot more potential to grow in the future. So I'm very excited to get your take on it. But before we get to the questions that I have for you, I want to go ahead and run through a little quick summary of the business. Again, the business was built in November of 2014, has a monthly revenue of $76,691. Expenses of $52,169 to make for a net profit of $24,522, which is generated on a 12-month average. Included in the sale of this business are five SKUs, one product ready to be launched, the Amazon Seller Central account, branded domain and all site content and files, Shopify account, email list, ebook, social media accounts, and SOP for supply chain and key business operations. Please note that inventory is not normally included in the list price. Further details can be provided to active depositors. Luke, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, sure. So for me, I started out probably around six years ago now. I was previously studying to be a psychologist and working as a youth worker, but I transitioned into business and became interested in starting an online company. And I began in the Kindle space. So I started publishing Kindle books on Amazon and Quickly after that, transitioned into physical products. I went through basically every training course out there, so the amazing selling machines and various other ones that are available. So I dedicated a lot of time to learning this stuff and then launched my first Amazon FBA business back probably five years ago, and that was in the office product space. And that started to do quite well. So not long after that, I started another venture and partnered with my parents, actually. And that was the business that we're talking about today. So that began around four years ago. And we've slowly but steadily built that up over time. And yeah, it's where it is today through just, I guess, consistent hard work. And yeah, we're really happy with where it is today. So if you are as happy with it where it is today, as you say, why have you decided to sell it today? Yeah, right. So basically, as I mentioned, I've got partners on this business, so it's myself and my parents. If it was 100% my decision, I wouldn't be selling, but my parents are in retirement age. They're into their 60s. My dad has a background in construction and property development, and for some time, he's been looking at the option of taking the capital out of this business and beginning to invest in property and flip houses because, as I say, that's what he knows really well. So we've been having these discussions for quite some time, going back and forth on, you know, should we sell it, should we not, should we just keep it and keep growing it? Basically, in this situation, I'm kind of outnumbered. (laughs) So due to the nature of what they want to do, we've come to the agreement that we will sell it. It's at a great position to sell. It's been growing month over month over month for a long time now. So we sort of have been debating when and if to sell it, but we've figured now is as good a time as any so they can begin their sort of property development phase of their career. And also because just due to their age, they don't really want to be actively involved in running a business anymore. They want something more of a passive income structure. So you mentioned there that the business has been growing, and I said that before too. And if you look at the numbers for the last year, it definitely is growing. There's been an upward trend for the large majority of the year. And you know, last September, you made $20,000 in profit. And in August, just two months ago, you made $51,000 in profit. So what has been mm. the biggest contributing factor to this massive growth? Yeah, so there's been a few things, I guess. It's kind of like the snowball effect. We've always focused on great customer service and product quality. So due to those two things, our review counts on our main SKU is over 1,500 with a very high rating of 4.8 stars. And 
We don't have any competitors that are even in that ballpark in terms of average reviews or the number of reviews. So that just over time has really contributed. There's also been some competitors of ours who evidently were using dodgy review practices and Amazon has cracked down on them and basically removed a bunch of their reviews. So that's made us stand out even more as the pack leader in that niche. So that specifically over the last sort of three to four months has seen us grow quite significantly. And even this current month has been bigger than the August month again. So it's, it's looking really promising in that sense. So yeah, it's basically just being strict on following Amazon terms of service and growing it in a natural above board way. Whereas our competitors, I think, have been taking shortcuts and it's kind of come around to bite them in the butt at this point. So yeah, I think that's the main reason. Just product quality and review count has really started to make us stand out more and more. Mm -hmm. So as I said before, when I was reading off the assets included in the sale, although this is primarily an Amazon FBA business, there is a branded website that is coming along, you know, with the sale and there is a Shopify store set up there. So can you give me the breakdown on what the percentage is of Amazon versus off Amazon sales? Yeah, sure. So we set up the Shopify store as a secondary channel to take sales. We haven't at this point dedicated much resources into driving traffic there. So any sales we get there is just purely organic. And for that reason, we don't see a whole lot of sales coming through the site. We might get a few per month. You know, it's anywhere between three to five sales a month just sort of trickle in on the Shopify store. It's something that's on our list to focus more on in order to grow the business. We do have an email list. Again, we haven't even really utilized that to start driving traffic to the site yet, mainly because we've just seen Amazon as such a powerful channel for launching and growing products. So yeah, that's kind of where it's at. It's very, very minor in terms of our overall income comes from the Shopify store. When going to talk about the Amazon sales then, since it is all, or not all, but primarily Amazon, where does your traffic come from? Is it all organic or do you do Amazon pay-per-click? So we um, do very little Amazon pay-per-click. So with our main SKU, which is our main earner, we rank extremely well for all the relevant keywords across the board. So it's really probably 99% organic and we do have the opportunity to turn on more pay-per-click traffic and increase sales even further. I guess some of the reasons we haven't done that is just maintaining inventory and the growth trajectory that we've already had over the past 12 months and even longer. It's We haven't really needed to use any other sort of traffic sources other than organic traffic that we're getting from our rankings for different keywords for the related products, keywords. How much time does it take you and I guess your business partners, your parents, to maintain the business as is on a weekly basis? Yeah, so it's not a lot of time. I would say at a guess, probably five to 10 hours. We have some customer emails that trickle in. We might get one to two a day, generally on average. So generally minor issues, nothing major. It's not a hazardous product. It's nothing that requires a whole lot of customer service. So yeah, I'd say about five to 10 hours, just managing the supply chain, keeping inventory in stock, customer emails. That's basically the main time issues that we have, yeah. And is there anyone helping you run the business or is it just you and your parents? Yeah, so it's just myself and my parents. I manage the marketing and keyword ranking and product launch side of things and they run the supply chain side of things. So they're in contact with the suppliers and making sure inventory is kept in stock. Yep. So while the business is extremely profitable for you now, surely four years ago when you started, you know, you didn't have a crystal ball, right? So why did you settle upon Amazon FBA rather than something else, you know, say drop shipping or e-commerce? Yeah, I guess I just stumbled into it. So I think, as I mentioned, I started selling Kindle books on Amazon. I went through a training program that taught how to basically create passive income through publishing these Kindle books and, you know, having them generate income for you every month. 
And through that, I started to have some success selling on Amazon and I saw it as a really viable avenue for building a business. And then I basically stumbled into the Amazing Selling Machine course. I was referred to it by friends. I checked it out. It was a fairly expensive program, $5,000 or something, but it just seemed like a really great model of sort of finding a demand on Amazon, finding a supplier, rebranding potentially twisting the product to give it some unique element that would make it stand out in the long term. And yeah, it was just kind of fate, I guess, if you want to call it. I just stumbled into it and it made a lot more sense to me than drop shipping and that sort of stuff because the margins in drop shipping are nowhere near as good. If you were to do retail arbitrage or something, you're not really building in assets. You're just sort of building a little cash flow stream. So For me, I was looking at building an asset long term that could be potentially sold, which is, I guess, here we are now, four years later. And yeah, I think just the profit in something like that made a lot more sense to me. What do you feel are some of the opportunities for growth for this business? Yeah, so I think one obvious one would be launching the products into the European market. So we don't actually currently sell in any of the European markets. We sell solely in the USA, which we've basically done that because, as I say, with the growth trajectory we've had, we've just sort of been focused on maintaining that growth, keeping inventory in stock and trying to keep on top of things as it grew in the US. So there's definitely an opportunity to go over to the European market and launch some of our products over there. I would also say we have a couple of SKUs that are fairly new. They have positive reviews, but they're still not yet ranking well for their primary keywords. So whilst they're great products and we've sourced very high quality, with a bit of promotion and focus over a period of a few months, I know they can really start generating more income for the business. And yeah, I would say that's probably a couple of low-hanging fruit that I would see. Potentially ordering larger amounts of stock can reduce the supply chain costs a little bit, which could improve profit again slightly there. Yeah, I would say those are the obvious ones to me and also driving traffic to the Shopify store. So through use of Google pay-per-click and that sort of stuff and Facebook advertising even, I think the Shopify store could really become a good income generator as well. Is there a reason why you previously hadn't expanded into other marketplaces? Like for instance, you know, the European Amazon markets? I guess it's just the simplicity elements of the US market. My parents being of an older generation are a little bit apprehensive to complicate things. And because, as I mentioned, we were growing fairly significantly with our current model, we didn't want to bite off more than we could chew. And we just wanted to keep it simple. So it's definitely been something we've talked about for the past probably 12, 18 months, and we've done research into it and almost pulled the trigger a couple of times. But I guess just maintaining stock levels in the US has been the focus. Just a couple of hoops you have to jump through as well. So setting up different tax structures in the European markets, which again, it's it's not a big hoop to jump through, but it's just something that's made it a little bit less appealing to us in the short term. But it's absolutely something we will be looking at if we continue to run the business in the short term. We'll definitely be doing that. There was a dip in June of 2017 due to Amazon taking down the listing for three weeks. So what happened then? Why did that happen? Yeah, so basically we had an issue with the packaging on our product. So We had one customer complain that they received a used item that was supposed to be new. And the reason being is because the previous box we had had the potential for the lid to slide open in transit. And yeah, Amazon being the strict platform that they are, they saw that one complaint as reason to take down the listing until we resolve the issue. So we have resolved the issue now and we've recreated our packaging from scratch through contacting packaging experts in the USA and we have have a very secure box and packaging now that can't slide open but yeah it did take a number of weeks for us to get the listing back up and to prove to Amazon that we'd fix the issue with the packaging that wasn't going to open itself during transit so it's as I say 100% resolved now but it was quite a quite an annoying issue at the time as you can imagine. 
Do you feel like there are any other potential risks associated with this business that a new owner should be aware of? No, I don't think so. I mean, not more than any other Amazon e-commerce business. There's always the potential for the industry to change and shift, but that's I think that's the nature of business in general, like nothing lasts forever, but I think I don't see anything in the next three to five years that could impact the business in any negative fashion. What advice do you have for someone who wants to get started with Amazon FBA? Is there anything that you wish you had known when you got started? I think I was lucky I had some pretty good mentors when I started out and I went straight to the source of learning the best way to do things. So some of the lessons were really focus on being customer centric. And that's something we've done from day one. I've personally run like multiple Amazon brands. So this is just one of them. But across all those brands, I've always focused on delivering amazing customer service. So trying to be really prompt with responding to customer issues. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have such a good review rating on our SKUs and such a better review rating than our competitors is because we really go over and above. If someone has an issue, we'll send them a replacement. We'll also give them a refund and we'll give them a thorough apology. And we often get customers writing back saying, wow, this is just really amazing customer service. I'm going to give you a raving review for this. This is amazing. So I think that in the long term really snowballs and it's something that a lot of sellers sort of neglect and they're a little bit lazy on. So it's an old cliche, but the customer's always right. No matter what their issue is, even if you think potentially they're the one that's at fault, they've ordered the wrong product, they've pressed the wrong button, just taking accountability for that and really delivering amazing customer service would be the first thing. Second thing would be, always focusing on product quality so with our main SKU, we really ordered a lot of samples before we committed we weren't weren't in any rush to commit to the products and for that reason we've got hands down the highest quality products in our market and that's apparent through our reviews and it's apparent through our sales that people are really willing to pay for quality we also charge more than basically any of our competitors and we also outsell any of our competitors due to product quality and great customer service. So I'd say those two are the big ones that people often get a bit lazy on. And it's the two big things that you can't miss. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble in the long term. Would you commit to a non-compete? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And how much support are you willing to offer a new owner during the transition period? Yeah, so I've said from memory, 30 days email support plus four Skype sessions, which, I mean, they can go as long as needs be. If there was further support required, I don't think there would be because it's there's not too many moving pieces in this business, which is good. If there was some further email support required and potentially another Skype call, I'd also be open to that. So as much as needed, within reason, obviously, I'm willing to give. Are you open to negotiating on something like an earnout? Yes. So if the offer was right, we wouldn't be looking for any sort of long-term deal structures, but it's something we would consider if the offer was right. Yeah. Luke, given your expansive history with this business, and now you're selling it today, why do you feel like it is a business worth buying? I think I would say because it has a real moat around it, to use that sort of business metaphor, our main skew has a few things that make it very stable, very hard for competitors to compete. So that for me is the main reason. And as I mentioned, it's due to our large number of reviews, a lot more than our competitors. It's due to the high review rating over 4.8 stars, which obviously on Amazon's page shows up as a five star rating just based on their star system. So when customers are scrolling down searching for this product, Our product is really the only choice. People scroll down, they see our one, it has the Amazon choice badge for certain keywords. And just based on the review rating, people tend to just choose us over the competitors every day of the week. And there's not really any way for any competitors to catch up at this point because Amazon has cracked down on review acquisition and the way people were requiring reviews in the past through dodgy means, you can't do that anymore. So the fact that we sit above with our superior review rating. It's not something that people can just hack and catch up to. 
So, yeah, for me, that's what makes it appealing. It's got some real long-term potential. It's a product that's, just talking about our main product here, it's a product that is an essential item. It's not a nice-to-have product. It's a need-to-have product, and it's not something that's trending. It's not very seasonal. It's a good earner all year round, and it's something that for years into the future is going to be required by people. So, yeah, I think for those reasons, it's very appealing to myself, at least as a potential investment. Luke, thank you so much for taking the time with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. My pleasure. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. If you want more information, the link will be below the video that will take you to this marketplace listing. If you're watching this on the listing site and want more information, become a depositor today. When you make the deposit, one of our business advisors will be in contact with you and you'll be given everything you need to review this business. Have a great day.